All right, welcome back to another episode of Code Like a Pro. Today we're going to be talking about comments. Comments are a little bit of an interesting topic compared to the other items because in this section there's more um, why we don't use comments than how to write good comments. But those are going to be our two main objectives. So we're going to be talking about what are good comments, what are bad comments, and how we can know uh, if it's worth putting worth having one what are some of the downsides of having them and how we can for the most part remove comments and why right so the very first aspect that we're going to be talking about uh, are what makes comments bad this is just two points there's a lot of other things but these this is the first example we're going to get so these are the two most common reasons I would say that comments are used um, that the the major issue with comments these main two and then there's about five others we're gonna cover in a second but uh comments are used when they really aren't needed um and typically comments are used to explain bad code usually when you are writing your code at this point you've seen you know good variable names and we're going to showcase an example of that good function names we're going to showcase an example of that as well that if you write your code well in a descriptive fashion, you shouldn't really ever need comments. So let's go ahead and jump into an example. I want to thank the boys at Dev Mountain for sponsoring this video. You can check them out at devmountain.com. They are a coding boot camp. They do design, quality assurance, Salesforce, full stack, JavaScript web development. I've had the luxury of visiting some of their campuses and they are beautiful. They are also one of the few boot camps that include housing with your tuition so you can get up and go and just fully dive into the experience. Check them out at devmountain.com. So we want to focus on two things in here. Uh, one where there's unneeded comments and two where comments are unnecessary, right? And um, I didn't even talk about this in the slide, but misleading comments as well. One of the reasons you don't want to leave comments is that's another additional thing that we have to update, another thing that we have to maintain. It's documentation, essentially, that we have to maintain, and it could be counterproductive uh, to our code. So let's look at an example of that first, uh, where we have a function name here called longest string. It's singular. At one point, perhaps this returned a single, the single longest string. However, Examining the code and reading the comment here it says gets all the longest string. So our comment here is different than the function variable name. And one thing that we can do to eliminate this comment is we can actually update this name to to make more sense, right? So typically your function names just want to be verbs, and in this case we're getting an array of things so we're going to get the long string so we can eliminate this comment and now we have a much more descriptive name and this is these are things we already talked about but here our next comment is a example of just a length length of what right so it here we have we're initializing the longest let uh, to index at zero right so this comment doesn't make a lot of sense it's really unnecessary right so instead of length we can uh, we can call this because let's let's look at how it's utilized. Here we're checking to see what the longest word length is in in the string, and so we can do something like this: longest word length. Easy enough. Now we've eliminated that comment. We have one less line of code, and we have a much more descriptive word. And in this case, we don't really need to put. I've said in this case like eight times, but. Um, there's no reason to define that, hey, we're getting the zero. That, that comment basically said we're initializing it to a length of zero. Does that help anybody? Can no one tell that th that's what's happening here? It's, it's very, you just have to read the one line of code and it's there. Adding that provides no additional value. So we now can go ahead and put this into here. We've eliminated our comments. Um, and here's another great example of a comment that really isn't necessary. Checks if the current string is longer. Well, I, I think we can all tell that the current string is, in fact, like this is what's going on here. This isn't an overly convoluted if statement. This isn't a, you know, anything that's outside of the norm. We're doing a simple single comparison. And this comment here as well filters out any values not equal to the longest string. 
we can we can tell that this is a essentially a one line and even we could remove some characters here as well just to clean it up if we wanted this is a one line uh, callback function here that's filtering out um, now one thing that we can do as well is to, to just hone this in is rename our variable here and we can call this uh, longest words And what we've done now is we've eliminated some misleading comments uh, or mis uh, act technically the comment wasn't misleading, but the function name was misleading, but typically it's in the reverse order. And uh, we've also eliminated unneeded comments uh, just by renaming our variables and just comments that really weren't doing anything, right? Hey, hey, here we're telling it to to you know check the length. Like we can we can see that very easily. Two more things that people love to leave in that are really bad comments are leftover code. That's code that we've commented out and then uh, that we don't plan on using at that time. Uh, and then version control code. Uh, so let's go ahead and give some examples. Now this doesn't happen too often anymore, but occasionally some, some developers will have this bad habit left over when version control is a little bit more of an issue. Um, and this, this, both these sections, I, I'm kind of combining the two because I, I think they stem from a place where version control was kind of a pain to work with. So you have these blocks of code here where the whole, per it's a log, you know, they're basically logs. Hey, on the 4th of July, you put a comment in, and then, you know, on the 10th, we put in, you know, uh, a comment here. All this stuff is handled in the version control with our comments, and there's really no point or place for it in it. Now, the other thing that is really bad practice is having, you know, you can comment code out when you're working, when you're testing, when you're going things, but you should never have code commented out in your application when it's in production or, or it's moving forward. The reason for it is you're going to confuse future developers. Why is this commented out? Is this supposed to be commented in? Should I go and delete it? If you're no longer using a piece of code, delete it. Uh, if you need to go back and get it, that's what version control is for. We have references to it. There's tons of logs that have all this sort of stuff. We can jump back in and get it. There's absolutely no reason in today's world to have commented code in, in your in your production application. So um, either com I'm commenting back in because this is part of one of my actual projects, but delete it from the application and uh, move on with your, your, uh, with your programming. So visual markers are another really bad tendency when it comes to comments. So what's a visual marker? Essentially a just a block of code, of a commented out code to say, this is what is here. This is what is there. Let's go ahead and give an example. So I know we've all seen at least one file in our lifetime that has done this where you have these sort of blocks of codes that really describes what's going on with the structure of your page, what's going on with the formatting of the page here. You know, dependencies are here, meta information here, properties are here, public functions are here. Um, really, when it comes to structuring of, and this is Angular, but this is the same for any sort of class or any sort of component or just code in general, you want to, you know, that this is much like other comments, just filler text that takes up space and room. And if you actually think that you need to break out this part of your code, you need to consider having a new file because it's the concern is so different that you need to put a t like a big block like this. Then maybe it is something that's entirely different. And it's we need to pull that out and, and give it its own sort of domain. But there's no there's no reason to have these tags. Let the structure of your classes be what they should be. Right. So tip. Properties are ex excellent example. Typically, your properties would be the first thing in your class, and you know, followed by maybe a constructor and then a function. Um, no, no real need to put self-explanatory sort of tags like, yeah, this is clearly you know the decorator meta information. This is clearly the dependencies which come up at top by you know by standard. So these sort of visual cues, visual markers, there is absolutely no reason to have it in, in your application. The last sort of item I want to uh, sort of caution you when it comes to comments are to-dos. So if you're not familiar with to-dos, to-dos are something devs like to do where uh, <laughs> uh, they like to, I'm trying to think of a different word than do, but they like to do to-dos to say, hey, go back and add this feature, expand upon this, remove this, delete this. 
And uh, I don't really have any examples to show you for this, but I just want you to understand why it's bad convention. Uh, for one, a to-do, much like other comments, or something you have to maintain. It's something that you have to keep track of. Now, if you want to keep track outside of the application, that's perfectly fine. But requirements change, which means that to-do may no longer be a to-do, and you may not be the one doing it. But if someone sees it in the code, they may do it, and it may no longer be relevant. And in fact, it may actually break the code. It's just another piece of, it's just another thing we have to maintain at, that can cause confusion and uh, issues down the road. So please avoid to-dos. So we've talked about some uh, pretty much all a uh, ton of bad comments. And if you've kind of got a feeling from this that you shouldn't leave comments, in general, that's a good practice, right? We've talked about how we can make it, we could eliminate the need for comments because comments are really there when we have failed to name our functions and our variables properly and in our code to be descriptive, right? We want the code, we want to better structure our code so that we can tell what's going on in the code without having to leave the comment. That's our objective here. We're gonna write better code where comments are not needed. Now. There are some times where comments are especially needed, and, and we're going to give some examples of what those might be. So let's talk about the characteristic of some good comments and some comments that we have to have. To have. So the first thing is that it needs to be short and concise. It's whenever you see a paragraph of commented out something, chances are a lot of that's fluff, a lot of it's unneeded, or it's redundant. And it's, it's going to cause more issues than not. And with such a big comment, it's, it makes it even harder to maintain. So we want to make it, we want to make it short and concise, right? If it goes longer than one line, you, you're, you've messed up on your comments. So you need to refactor it. It provides value. Um, you know, just saying, hey, constructor here, we can see a constructor's there. But what's the value? Um, and so when, when do we use a comment, right? Um, so these next two things kind of are kind of grouped together. But... We use a, uh, a comment when it clarifies code that has a business purpose but looks out of sort, right? So what I mean by that is there may be some domain knowledge in the system that you know, newer developers may not be familiar with. And here we, we say a warning or an ampli amplification of its importance to say, hey, I know this looks strange and it's, you know, there's not a cleaner way of doing this, but we have to do this to get... We have to do this to protect ourselves, or we have to do this to provide the functionality that's needed, and here is why. Uh, so when there's something that's strange like that, like, oh, I don't think we have to do this, but we actually do, that's where we want to have a comment, comment uh, for that business purpose, as well as to provide a warning or the amplification of its importance. And then, of course, legal comments. Legal comments, there's, there's no real way around it. Sometimes when you're using open source libraries, you need to have a legal comment at the top of your file to use it that's just something that's part of it and there's other ones as well those are the types of good comments so let's go ahead and give a couple examples of a warning or a or a amplification of importance type comment all right so let's take a look at some examples of what perhaps could be considered good comments so the very first one is a legal comment. So as I mentioned, sometimes when you use open source libraries, you, they'll have you paste this into one of your pages where you're using it. And so these typically will go at the top. There's really nothing you can do to get around it if that's what the, the license says. In this, I'm just using random open source library. I just made something up and sort of what it would expect. So got to have that. So that's, I consider that a good comment, not the best comment. The next is an informative comment that isn't readily ap apparent, right? So something that showcases but needs clarification. And there's not really a good way when we have these three different date matchings to in the variable do it without it getting clustered and cluttered and it's just not going to look all that good. So here we say, hey, this regular expression, its expected format is these three items now or are these three items rather these three formats and so that's a great way to do it now th there could be an argument made that perhaps we could see this in a in a test for wherever we use this function and that's a fair argument but this is an example of something that i might leave a comment to provide value because i mean at first glance i don't think anybody's going to look at this and be like oh yeah this is what it does no it's it's not like not, nothing like that so Another thing is, remember when I told you about warnings or amplifications? This is an example, right? So let's say we're taking in an ID, and 
you know, this might look a little strange to you when we're comparing these numbers, that we're trimming the value that comes in and we're parsing as an int, all this sort of stuff. So um, perhaps what we, you know, and probably want to do that for this, for uh, JavaScript, but say, um, Say there there was an outstanding issue, and even this is kind of this is best I could come up with off the top of my head. But we're trying to explain why we're removing the trim from the from the string, and the reason for, for it is there's an outstanding issue where the UI layer is injecting characters, and perhaps we can't solve it, or we you know it's something in there. But it's a warning to say, hey, why are we doing this, and why are we treating it as a string, and all this sort of stuff. And why are we trimming the characters? It shouldn't be passing any empty characters with it if we did our, our job right, right? So those sort of warnings as to, hey, this doesn't really make sense. This is kind of odd. Those are the comments that you have to leave for when when you, when you there's no way around it. When there's something that you need to tell them, like, if you remove this trim, I know it looks like it doesn't need to be here, but if you remove it, it's going to break everything. Um, and that we haven't found a way to fix it yet or we're going to fix it. Um, but short and concise provides value of some sort telling you what it is and then legal comments now by the end of this you've probably said hey man so we don't leave comments anymore that's a good thing that's another thing we don't have to maintain our unit tests are going to be our form of documentation to explain how our application evolves our code structure should be clean and concise and follow standards and that there's no reason for those blocks of codes um, you know comments for what a function does or a variable is should be not should be um uh, should be far and few between because we're going to name our variables properly and we're going to name our functions properly so that they're descriptive and 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 show us what our code is doing instead of us talking us through comments typically are used as they're redundant and they're you know they're used to tell you what you can already see um but mo uh worst of all they are a crutch for bad code and so we're gonna make our code better so we don't need comments so I hope you enjoyed this episode of code like a pro um, on comments don't forget to comment like and subscribe and share you can support me on patreon hit that notification bell subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time bye so uh, Ivan has a a pretty standard question of um, he's able to create a normal nav bar a normal component but he's not quite sure how to build a, you know, quote unquote, cool nav bar. Really, at the end of the day, I, I think a lot of devs struggle with design. Um, that's why we have like UI, UX people who will design the stuff and then front end devs will build it. That's a different aspect altogether. So I wouldn't worry too much about that unless you're interested in going in design. Now, if you want to get better at design, the, the way you get better is by anything else, practice, right? By studying and learning. And like I, one of the gaps in, for, in my learning process for quite some time has been CSS. I'm much better. And I would say I'm actually fairly strong in CSS now because I, last six months or so, I've made an effort to make it a priority. So if you're interested in making design a priority and UI UX a priority, all you gotta do is practice. And it, you know, instead of, it's it just really, it's like anything else. You just got to put the time in. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you subscribed and hit that notification bell. Check out my latest course, the 100 Algorithms Challenge, where we go through 100 different algorithms in JavaScript and TypeScript so that you can ace your next JavaScript coding interview. You can get it in the description for just $9.99. Check it out. See you next time. Thanks for watching.